Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Now, recently, uh, I've, I've shown this clock a few times without really saying much about it, and I've received some requests to go in depth a little bit on <laughs> what is this clock. So, as I've talked about mechanical clocks and watches a little bit more lately, um, this is a mechanical clock that I put together as a kit back in 1994. This is a kit from the Emperor Clock Company. And they would also have kits for like, um, you know, grandfather clocks. So you could buy the mechanical part of it from them. And then you could either do the woodworking yourself based on their plans, or you could get the pieces already cut and do the rest of the wood assembling yourself. And uh, that's what this kit was. So, um, this one has Westminster chimes, and it also has this moving moon dial to show me the, the phase of the moon throughout the month. And so those were two features that I, I liked that were on, um, you know, grandfather clocks. And this being a little bit smaller, uh, not quite as expensive or uh, not quite as, as large and, you know, difficult to handle like a big old grandfather clock. So this was kind of my... Uh, my compromise, something I could afford, something that I could uh, put together with, uh, you know, just some amateur woodworking skills and, uh, and still be a little bit short of that grandfather clock that I was dreaming of. When I was a kid, uh, I lived in Illinois for several years and my grandmother lived in Wyoming. And when I went to her place, she had this mechanical wind-up clock that played the Westminster chimes, and I was just really charmed by this clock. It didn't have the moon dial, though. It was one of those mantle clocks that has kind of that curved design, almost like, you know, the bell curve type of design, right, with the, with the clock face there. And, uh, and that was just such a, a charming, wonderful clock, and I, and I always thought, well, maybe someday, I, you know, as sort of an inheritance thing, maybe I can speak up and say, can I please have, you know, grandma's clock? Uh, it turns out when the time came uh, that her, her possessions were kind of divided up there, um, turns out I've got a lot of cousins, aunts, uncles, and, um, you know, someone else spoke for that clock long before I even raised my hand. So uh, I didn't get my grandmother's clock, but instead, a few years later, I saw this kit. Okay, so I decided uh, not only did it have the chimes uh, that I loved, but, you know, the moon dial, this would be the thing I wanted to do. Now, with the Emperor Clock Company kit, or at least with this one in particular, the pieces were already cut. So what I had to do as the kit builder would be to, you know, measure things and uh, drill a few holes and put in some screws and bolts and also glue a few pieces together and uh, then stain it and put the final finish on it. I decided I wanted to go for kind of a dark stain and a more glossy finish on this and that's what I did. You can see a few places if you look closely and I maybe I won't show you where the glue when I glue these side pieces in the glue uh, came off just a little bit beyond where it should have been so when I went to stain it uh, the stain didn't go on perfectly because maybe there were some spots of glue on the stain you know but but you know if you're a good wood woodworker conscientious the idea put this together very carefully sand it very carefully finish it very carefully and then as the final step uh, you can install the actual <laughs> mechanical pieces. So the way this worked, I'll just show you here real quick. Um, you've got, well, th this back cover, this is not a hard wood of any sort. It's, it's kind of soft and not very thick. And so this is just, you know, the back piece. It doesn't have any structural uh, integrity, doesn't need to. But there's a piece of the same kind of wood inside here. And this is what the, you, you mount the mechanical parts of the clock to this same kind of wood that runs through the middle of this case. And I, that always concerned me because I thought this was kind of a soft wood and uh, this main part of the mechanical, uh, you know, heart of the clock is a little bit heavy. And I, and I wondered if that was going to, to stay. But uh, I'll just show you here. So what, what you have, and you know, let me just open the front door here and show you real quick. So you got this beautiful face of the clock, okay? And uh, there are four little screws that hold that to the piece of wood that, that's similar to this. That piece of wood is, is uh, has, it's already pre-cut so that uh, the mechanism can, can interact with the face of the clock for the moon dial and anything here. So there's kind of a big hole there, but you, you know, you line this up just right and screw the face in, and then 
you uh, they've got some little pegs you put through these holes here so that you can align the winding uh, you know mechanism with these holes and that will also line up uh, everything else from the from you know the mechanical heart of the clock that movement uh, lines it up so it so it interacts perfectly with the face of the clock then you can mount the hands and everything will uh, will, will line up uh, just right and so uh, this this big this big mechanical piece here this is a movement made by Hermle Hermle uh, you know people have been trying to cor correct my German pronunciation but uh, Hermle like Porsche I guess you know that uh, at the end so th this is the main piece here and it's a little bit heavy, you know, nice, nice all metal stuff, gears and mainsprings and everything like that. And then there are four little places where, again, you use these tiny screws to mount this heavier piece to that same piece of wood. And I was always concerned about that because uh, if you, these, these little screws, and if you turn them too much, you know, they were easily stripped. And then this whole thing would just kind of, you know, fall off. So uh, I, I did my best to mount this and, and lined it up and got it all right. Uh, without you know over tightening and stripping those screws and then after using the clock for a couple of weeks and winding it a few times um, th it just became loose and finally did you know kind of feel like it was going to fall off so i said okay back up hang on i took i took the you know the hands off and and took this part out again and i removed the face of the clock from from this part that it was mounted to and then I replaced the screws that were holding this big mechanism in place. I instead got these uh, flat head counter sunk screws that I could put nuts on them. And I, and I put those screws in through the, through the front of uh, the clock pointed back. I got them flush with this, you know, piece of wood that was in there so that I could then remount the face. And then I remounted this, this movement uh, with these bolts that uh, that held up much better. I haven't I found some scrap pieces of just you know lightweight wood and stuck them in there just to get the spacing exactly right and mounted in there and and it's much more solid uh, even to this day you know from 1994 until today. So uh, like I said you know amateur woodworking skills. I I kind of had my suspicions as to just how sturdy this design was and. With a little bit of my own ingenuity and going down to the hardware store and buying a few extra pieces, I was able to make this as stable as I wanted it to be. I suppose if uh, the internet were around in 1994 like it is today, there would have been a lot of reviews of this kit uh, warning people that the screws are not quite uh, strong enough and it's going to be a little bit of a problem. You might want to modify uh, how you put this together uh, as opposed to the way that the instructions tell you to do it. But, uh, well, I, it wasn't that hard. I figured it out. Okay, so then, then uh, you mount down here these rods for the chimes. And there's kind of a, you know, it's pretty simple. You've got the hammers that come down and interact with those rods. So you need to mount the, the, this little block that the rods are sticking out of uh, so that it lines up with these hammers. And if it doesn't line up perfectly, then you can, you can you know, bend, bend them a little bit uh, so that they'll line up better with the rods. And there you go. And uh, even came with a nice little plaque that I put in here uh, you know, to honor myself having done <laughs> this project uh, back uh, you know, in the summer of 1994, just like it says. I don't know if I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that by the time I was finished with it, it might not have been June of 94 anymore. But uh, at any rate, that's when I made the order. And uh, that's what I put it together. There was, there was one other problem with the, uh, this as far as, you know, everything lining up exactly like it said it would. And that was the the hinges here for this door. Uh, when I When I got it all, figured out how it was supposed to go and measured and you know, I had this door centered just right and installed a little latch over here to interact with this to keep the door shut. Turns out uh, these hinges were, weren't, weren't quite right. You know, the, the door was kind of hanging towards this side a little too much. So again, found a couple of pieces of scrap wood and just uh, put them in between the, the case and the hinge on the top and bottom here so that the door would line up better in the middle of this space. Oh, here you go. All right, see, it, it works, it works. 
And, uh, and now that fit just the way I wanted it to. So if you look really closely, again, you're going to see that uh, it's, not, it's not a perfect job. And you're saying, well, you know, who's the amateur that put this together? Well, it was me, okay? <laughs> but again, not that difficult to figure out how to put the hardware on, a few screws, a few, a few uh, uh, drilled holes you know, here and there, and, and, and you're ready to go. Oh, oh, and there's one more thing I should uh, mention, that the, the, the piece of glass here did not come with the kit. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a unique piece of glass. It's kind of, you know, this, this almost square piece here with this, you know, this half circle on the top of it. So uh, you're not going to go down to your uh, regular, you know, glass shop and just say, hey, do you, do you, have, uh, do you have something that will fit this? No, they had to custom make that. And what I did is I gave them the door, I had the door off and said, you know, I need a piece of glass that will fit in this door. And it, it doesn't have to be a really thick piece of glass or anything special, just a little something to keep the dust out. And so a guy took it back and kind of etched it out on a piece of glass and chipped it away and, and, and made for me a perfect, uh, perfect fit, a piece of glass custom made that'll fit there. So that turns out that wasn't very difficult to do when I just went down to the glass shop, took them just a couple minutes, didn't cost me very much. And so that was the last piece to, to complete the, the clock. And so now, as you saw a moment ago, I had a sock in, inside here, right under the, it's a clean sock. Okay. I stuck it under these rods because uh, sometimes uh, I thought that the, the sound was a little bit too loud and, you know, it, it runs uh, every 15 minutes, night and day. And so I just stuck a sock down there to just mute that a little bit so that as this goes, you get kind of this <laughs> staccato effect. But, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I prefer to do that. Uh, there, there's a little uh, lever here. So if you want to silence the chimes, uh, they want you to just pull this lever down. And what that does is it holds the, it holds the hammers down so they're not able to lift up and then fall back down onto the rods. And I didn't like that. I don't know. It seems like, you know, you're, this little thing is, is, is working against the mechanism of the clock. And I thought, that just doesn't seem right. So rather than use that to uh, suppress the movement of the hammers, I just, I just put that sock down there to keep it kind of a little bit muted. Or uh, another thing I've, I've done is rather than put the sock underneath the chimes, uh, the rods like that, what I'll do is I'll just get a little piece of cloth or a napkin or something, and I'll just set it on top of the rods. Uh, and in between the rods and the hammers will be, you know, just... It allows the hammers to completely move every 15 minutes uh, whenever this thing would normally, you know, make the sounds. But uh, they are lifting up and then falling down on a piece of cloth, a piece of napkin, a piece of paper or something, and then not making any sound at all. Maybe just a little bit of mechanical sound if you get close to it, but certainly not the, the chimes that would be, you know, at all disruptive. Oh, unless, unless you let that thing move and then it is able to hit a rod again. So that's a little something that I do. Now uh, with this particular movement, it's got a, a, a um, it's similar to a, to a watch. It doesn't have a pendulum, but it's got the escapement and all the stuff that you would normally see in a watch. So in order to adjust it, to make it run a little bit faster or slower, there's an adjustment screw here. And I had to keep reminding myself that uh, uh, I think clockwise, if you turn this screw clockwise, it makes it run a little bit slower. Counter clockwise, uh, runs a little faster. And so uh, I just, you know, if, if it's not running exactly the right speed, I just make a, you know, just like a quarter turn adjustment on that right there and then watch it for a few days and see if it's doing better until I finally dialed it in to just the right setting. And there you go. So uh, as I was doing some research before making this video, I looked around, I thought, well, you know, what's the closest they have to this kit today? And uh, as I typed in Emperor Clock Company, you know, mantle clock kit, I found, I found one that looked an awful lot like this. Uh, the, the, the face was a little bit different. This has the regular, uh, what we call Arabic numerals. And so I found one that had uh, Roman numerals and the, the moon phase, uh, it's, you know, that little dial there was painted a little bit differently. And so it looked like uh, the, that, that was different. And in the back, as I looked at the pictures that someone posted, it did actually have a pendulum in here to uh, regulate the speed uh, that, it, that it's going. So even though the box itself, the, you know, kind of this little cabinet, was, it looked like it was exactly the same kit, turns out that at one time they were selling uh, the kit with a different movement 
uh, and a different face that went with it. So uh, you might find those. Uh, what, what I was not able to find today was the exact same kit still available. So I guess that doesn't surprise me too much. But, uh, but there it is, from 1994, a kit that I assembled, now an heirloom for my children and uh, maybe someday grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> they can, they, they can, someone can, can raise their hand and speak for this clock at some point, and I won't really even uh, be around to make an opinion about who gets it after I'm gone. So anyway, that, that's, that's kind of a strange way to conclude a video. But I, since, you know, folks did request that I gave a little bit more information about this clock that I had shown many times already in some of my recent videos, there it is. There's the story of that Emperor Clock Company mantel clock kit that I assembled in the mid 1990s, still runs today. There was a little while where I didn't really have a place to put it. So I kind of put it away and I let it run out. I figured the, the best way to store it would be to uh, allow the mainsprings to run out and then just let it sit for a while. And when I did that, it, it was probably, you know, well over a year, um, could have been, you know, several years, I don't remember, uh, before I decided to start it up again. And it was running particularly sluggish when I, when I got it going again. So I, I was able to find some uh, appropriate lubricant and uh, figure out how to oil some pieces there and get it running. And now it runs really smooth again. So, but that's just one thing to kind of watch out for. It, since it is mechanical, you do want to do some regular maintenance and lubrication and uh, make sure it's clean in there so that it will continue to run well for years and years and years. And uh, so far, uh, doing well. Anyway, that is my story of this clock that you've been dying to hear about and uh, you know I, I hope you like it. I, I like it and uh, you know don't be too afraid if you find a, a clock kit. Just know that probably you're not going to do much with the mechanical stuff. That's kind of pre-built. Uh, a lot of those kits now it's going to be uh, some some simple woodworking skills that you are going to show off or that you're going to learn if you buy a wood clock kit. It's mostly about uh, doing some simple woodworking. So anyway, and that's all for now. So I'm going to uh, sign off and promise you that someday really soon, I will make another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.